Our last speaker of tonight comes from a context uh, quite different uh, from Hasselt. Um, Serkan Taijan is based in Istanbul, a mega city of uh, several million inhabitants, and it has been growing massively uh, throughout the last <coughs> century. Serkan Taijan has been fascinated by the urban dynamics of this city for a long time, 20 years now, I think, the time he has been living there. He initially studied engineering and urban planning, but as a young practitioner, he felt more attracted to photography and journalism. And also, he finished his arts degree. And then, politically engaged in debates about the right to the city, Serkan started documenting the outskirts of Istanbul. And while photographing, um, he discovered also the power of walking, not only as a mythology, but also an understanding, um, a poetic and political act. And since yesterday, he uh, got a phone call from Canada that he got a PhD in uh, geography and architecture, which I think is great. So congratulations. <laughs> And today he will present us the project Between Two Seas, a walk he developed in Istanbul for the Biennale, 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 Biennale of 2013. It is not only an art project, but it's also an activist gesture, a pacifist resistance to power. Um, Serkan defined the trajectory, made a map, sig signalization on the road, promoted the walk, guided visitors, nourished debates before and after, and now it is an autonomous work, and um, many people who are working, walking it now, send uh, him pictures of the walk. Between Two Seas was so influential that it determined his practice, and I'm very curious if it will inspire you as well. Serkan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Katarina. <laughs> it was a great presentation, and thank you, and Jan David. Uh, I think you sum up most of the things that I'm going to talk about. <laughs> okay, so let me find my presentation here. Here we go. Okay, so um, tonight I will try to talk about uh, a walking trail uh, called Between Two Seas. Uh, in Istanbul. So try to sum up. Between two seas is a form of a creative act inspired by the Gezi resistance. I'm going to go about a bit about more about Gezi resistance, which investigates the relationship between the city and the nature through notions of the right to the city and longing for nature, bringing up questions positioned at the intersection between social and science, politics, and art. And tonight, I'm, going, I'm trying to sum up of this collective experience uh, in its last six years. So, uh, I would like to raise some questions about uh, art and uh, relations of social sciences, maybe. So, what kind of contributions could art make concerning urban-focused social issues? What kind of discussions platform could artistic action become became in uh, social processes, specifically about civil rights. So, uh, and last, Between Two Seas, which started as an art project, discussed within the framework provided by these questions, I aim to exemplify how artistic action can play a role in social processes. So in order to do that, I think I should speak about a bit about the Istanbul context. I mean, as Katarina mentioned, it's so, that's different than here being in Hasselt. Uh, so, uh, Istanbul, let me, oh, that's the first slide. Okay. Uh, Istanbul, as you all know, uh, is a city between two continents, Europe and Asia, Asia, and it's the only international, intercontinental city in the world. It has been an empire, uh, empire capital for around 16 centuries, and for two centuries, or around the Middle Ages, it was the most populated city in the world. Uh, and that was it's around the golden age. But let's come to the modern time. Istanbul population has increased dramatically since 1950s, going up to 18 million from 1 million in 80 years. 
This increase is mainly due to the migration within the country, triggering a significant transformation in the city's areas of inhabitants. The city limits has been uh, raised. Uh, uh, I would like to give you uh, an example. Uh, so one H on the right corner of the city to the left H is around 120 kilometers. And up north, it is 50 kilometers. So in order to give you an idea, from Hasselt to Ghent and Antwerp, let's make a triangle, and fill it with urban context. Fill it with buildings, industrial sites, and so on. That's Istanbul, actually. So uh, endless, uh, uh, this endless urban tissue. So um, those, uh, the, this picture uh, has, uh, is called, is, is, it's an interesting uh, web page called Mega Istanbul. It shows how the, uh, uh, the construction focused econ economic development projects has been uh, realized in Istanbul in the last 10 years. Um, the, the yellow zones that you see is the new coming urban areas, and the red ones, the red lines, is the new uh, construction projects that I'm going to talk about to you in, in a couple of minutes later. So, uh, the implementation of the construction focused economic development program of the government. I'm speaking the Thai Erdogan government nowadays, mean the remarkable increase in the construction of housing, bringing about an era when urban transformation projects in different neighborhoods and large-scale construction investments announced one after the other, making headlines all the time. Uh, and that was the time when Istanbul also in 2010 was the European capital of culture. Uh, so the construction boom appeared to grow in Istanbul and became a global city. Uh, but these projects not realized uh, in, with, uh, with, with open discussions. So let me show you one more slide about these uh, projects. And uh, during that time, uh, when I've been uh, searching about this transformation and uh, the image of transformation, I started to do photographs. So that was my previous uh, practice. So those are the images from 2008 to 2010, before the Gezi uprising, uh, three years before. Try to understand how the uh, landscape uh, taking transformation in the outskirts of Istanbul. So those are the public housing projects, which is done by the government. Uh, and there are several of them. And those are the uh, another uh, kind of, pop, uh, another uh, type of uh, project which are on the outskirts of Istanbul, which makes uh, a, a new panorama of the city, because Istanbul has been depicted always as panoramic images, because the city's topography is very suitable for uh, depiction of panoramic. So it's kind of a, a proposal of the contemporary uh, image of Istanbul. And those are around the same uh, locations. Um, yeah. Step by step, I'm, I, will, I, I was trying to follow the stage of uh, urbanism on those images. And the last stage of it is the most, uh, let's say, grotesque uh, phase of it. This is a, a, a gated community called Bosphorus City, uh, which is 15 kilometers away from Bosphorus, uh, the pool the the, uh, the water that you see is a concrete pool, actually, and resembling in the shape of Bosphorus. And those are obviously gated communities which you cannot access. And obviously, it's a uh, it resemble. I mean, it it it, it is uh, symbolically uh, symbolizes half the uh, um, social division of the city. And uh, so I was following. Those and this is from the same level of this uh, uh, the, with the previous uh, image. I mean, if I turn left, right, I see that image. So uh, and 
uh, through uh, around those times, I was also trying to follow the uh, flow of the uh, uh, material. Since uh, that time, that much of construction needs a lot of material, and those are the very close to the uh, periphery of Istanbul, uh, which is uh, a 15 minutes drive from the city center. Uh, once the city gets bigger and those holes get bigger, and it makes a tremendous ecological impact uh, around the city and the waste material out of it. Uh, and the uh, excavation dump sites where they uh, dump, uh, collect all this debris uh, in, in the query, uh, stone mine, uh, stone quarries that been digged for uh, centuries, uh, for decades, I'm sorry. And those are the, uh, the, the uh, from the same location where uh, they collected debris, and it's again a, a, another proposal to Istanbul's uh, contemporary panorama of today, because each color represents another part of Istanbul. So, uh, so that was a very brief uh, uh, research. Uh, I mean, uh, very brief uh, expl uh, explanation of uh, Istanbul. While I was researching this. That was sort of a uh, response to the uh, ongoing, uh, ongoing uh, urban transformation, and it carried out to the Gezi movement, as you know, uh, sp uh, discussing about the right to the city. Uh, these projects pose an important threat to the forests and wetlands, which are critical importance for Istanbul ecosystem. The transformation taking place around Istanbul affects the lives of people living in the city directly. Their environmental and economical impacts can be observed at, and the inhabitants of the city become increasingly aware of these effects. Uh, and this uh, uh, awareness brought us uh, to the Gezi movement. So while, uh, and those are a couple of images from the installation of those, and while I was searching about that after, uh, during three years, uh, I started to do mapping, maybe because of my engineering practice. So, and that was a very primitive, I mean, very, very beginning of the mapping uh, that I was uh, doing uh, before the walking practices. So those uh, numbers that indicated are the places where I made the pictures and uh, uh, the, 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 the blue lines is the numbers of the bus lines which goes at. It, it is obviously a very naive gesture uh, in order to take people uh, to have the tangible experience. Uh, to take part in the discussion, but though this practice uh, bring me uh, brought me another uh, another uh, uh, possibility uh, um, to 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 so this is the uh, uprising of the Gezi. What I was trying to explain, uh, show you. Uh, so. Uh, what I was trying to t uh, tell you, uh, uh, I, I was thinking um, to take people in order to have the same and similar experience that I have, uh, got, I have had during making this uh, photographic uh, walkings. So uh, I, I'm putting a parenthesis here, uh, and uh, as Andy showed a couple of uh, 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 examples about the walking, but I would like to uh, point uh, a, a couple of historical things about the walking, maybe uh, all you know about them, but uh, those are uh, obviously the suffrage parade uh, about the women's rights uh, in uh, 1913 uh, in Washington, uh, D.C. and. Uh, and the one uh, below was the Martin Luther King's, and obviously uh, Gandhi's and Mao's uh, walks had uh, been an important thing to uh, establish two, one of the two biggest nations in the world. So there is a uh, there is a strong social uh, uh, dimension of walking, uh, in, uh, and the capacity of. Uh, 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 mobilizing uh, people, and as Andy uh, and you mentioned before, like the Flaneurs and the Institutionis Internationalis, one of the modernist uh, examples of uh, these practices, and 
uh, again, stalkers uh, had been using this uh, uh, practice in order to understand and investigate the periphery of, uh, periphery of uh, Rome. So through these practices, I was I was thinking again back to, uh, back to uh, my uh, previous uh, idea. Uh, is it possible to make an urban uh, route around Istanbul uh, to take people into discussions? And I was trying to make some urban trails, as you know about uh, from here, like uh, the Camino Walk. I mean, most of you are familiar with, I'm sure, and and the way markings about it, you know, like uh, and the uh, signposts uh, uh, about this walk. So. Uh, I, I, I look back again to the same uh, map and trying to understand where it could be possible to make this trail. And suddenly I realized that uh, this red line can be very interesting. So the red line is the Canal Istanbul project. Was, uh, so let me show you another uh, slide. So the Canal Istanbul project was announced by then the Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan in 2011 as an election promise. Before the specific announcement, it was stated to be under the rubric of crazy project. According to the project, where there was to be 120 meters wide uh, and 45 meters deep transportation canal, channel on the west side of Istanbul on the red line which I showed you. Um, connecting the Marmara Sea on the north, uh, on the south, and the Black Sea on the north. The naval traffic on the Bosphorus will be transferred to there, diminishing the burden on the Bosphorus, and this change would also generate income. In addition to the transportation function, the project was also <coughs> announced as a construction project. The construction of a new city of three million, which is I think 50 times of Hasselt, right? So, um, <coughs> in parallel to the land uh, on which the canal will be built was also a secondary goal of the project. There are several different, those kind of renders uh, uh, circulating around the media. I mean, there <coughs> are unbelievable ones that I can give you, any, like one side of skies papers of Zaha Hadid and then the other side is Jean Noel, you know, like those kind of stupid and strange ideas going on. But um, neither Tayyip Erdogan's first statement nor the other statements made during the six years until January 2018 mentioned where the canal would be. The red line is just a, a first draft circulated around the media. So the route of the canal remains an unknown still now. So, uh, you know, and of course the canal would have a huge ec uh, ecological and social and political impact. Uh, and especially as a very fragile and uh, ecosystem as like Bosphorus has. Uh, so those are a couple of alternative routes has been circulating uh, in media. So when I realized this issue uh, and with the, with the idea that I tried to describe before, uh, and uh, then I, uh, and the gesture was easy. I proposed to turn the canal route into a walking trail before it is being constructed. Uh, in 2013, so um, uh, and so let me <coughs> tell you very briefly about what is the walking trail of between two seas. It's a walking route. Uh, is 62 kilometers long, which is the distance of the canal. The route is situated west of Istanbul between Black Sea and Marmara. It starts on the periphery of the city and approach to the center, uh, going through forests rural areas and water collection basins. It arrives at the center of the city. The itinerary goes through lignite quarries, the third airport, which is the biggest in the world now, they constructed, just opened recently, uh, and surrounding areas. 
the Northern Marmara Highway and its network of roads, excavation and debris sites, industrial and social housing projects, where the city's transformation and growth with a uh, disregard for ecological and social balances can be observed firsthand. Also on the route, uh, the cave, uh, which is the Paleolithic one, uh, the oldest settlement of Istanbul exists. So that means if they built the canal, the Palo Paleolithic cave, which is 8,000 years old, will be destroyed. Uh, and that brings uh, a not this discussion into a global discussion, actually, not just an Istanbul discussion. So, uh, so <clears throat> let me show you a couple of images from the uh, trail. I mean, uh, uh, sorry. Those are the uh, places where the lignite mines, which used to be important for the city for a couple of centuries. And you, uh, yeah. And from the rail tracks, which is not used anymore. And go approach to the city center uh, from the housing blocks, which now settled by Syrian refugees. Uh, around 5,000, uh, 500,000 in Istanbul, just uh, in Turkey, 3 million. Uh, so that's the map of the work. And that's the uh, back side of the map, which is the description of the trail, like a typical urban, uh, walking trail, you know. So uh, that's the map. And that's the installation where I showed this in the Istanbul Biennial in 2013, which this project started. Uh, and the initial idea was uh, uh, just showing the map and letting people to walk and having the experience by their own uh, in order to facilitate uh, the, the discussion. And those are the images from each kilometer, uh, like a repetitive activity in order to uh, log uh, uh, the trail uh, and we are repeating this uh, each and every year with the GPS uh, locations even though the canal is being built or not so uh, I'm out of time just in t t three minutes I'm gonna finish so uh, I go very quick about uh, uh, the images uh, just a short short walk with you uh, try to understand what uh, try to show you how the uh, how kind of a landscape it is that's the per first part uh, of the walk which is uh, on the uh, uh, man altered landscape let's say uh, and the second part of the work is more like a, a pittoresque uh, landscape in a way and then city approaches. So layer by layer, that means a four days walk uh, approaching to the city. Uh, and the water uh, reservoirs, which is highly important for the city, once the canal being built, this water reservoirs obviously being, uh, going to be disappear. And the third day follows another, uh, the same water reservoir from north to south. Uh, and the and approaching to the city center where the urban tissue started with the urban fringe uh, with uh, Gecekonda is a, a term exists in urban, urban uh, literature like favela uh, but particularly about Turkey and Istanbul uh, and that ends up, ends up in this cave which is the Paleolithic one and the, ter uh, the fourth day uh, uh, goes through the gated communities, as I showed you. That's the cave, by the way. Um, uh, and the urban gardens, which is, exist from 300 years, um, from the Ottoman time. Uh, and those are the urban, uh, suburban uh, center of the city. This is a typical day hike, uh, the end of a day hike. Uh, done by uh, the walkers, 
so it has been obviously turned into a social act, like with a social media account, uh, uh, and it became an anonymous activity. Uh, a social uh, a group of people gathered around it by their initiative and. Uh, uh, turn into a platform of discussion uh, and it has been turned into educational activity where a lot of institutions from Turkey and abroad uh, came and walk uh, as an excursion uh, excursion like from Harvard to Minnesota and from Norway Bergen to Swedish Royal Technical University to Konsfak and Paris Malaki and so much uh, so others so that's one of the walks that had been with uh, these uh, institutions uh, and it had been triggered a couple of other uh, uh, walking related groups and now they are doing a couple of other walks, walks trails around Istanbul um, and, uh, uh, and the funny thing that was uh, since it became a social act uh, and the symbolic meaning of uh, resistance. Uh, uh, just after the Gezi, uh, uh, some uh, ultra marathon guys ap uh, approached me and asked if we can run this in two, in one day, and they will, they run it uh, in one day in 62 kilometers and uh, uh, broadcast live on their uh, accounts, and then. It's, uh, uh, it reached to other networks of people who are not very into those discussions. Uh, I can just give you a couple of other uh, examples, which is two of them are uh, interesting, is that um, um, uh, some people who are, have not even known Turkish came, uh, that's a guy from Eugene from Singapore, which, with a funny uh, title. Uh, and Rob here, thanks for coming here <laughs> today. He was, I mean, uh, it's a surprise for me. Uh, he walked uh, right at the very beginning of the trail in 2013. You were the first uh, non-Turkish uh, solo uh, walker. So <laughs> that's why it's highly important. And uh, I, I show this presentation in everywhere and mentioning about you as a Belgian guy. <laughs> But well, actually, you're Dutch. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so that's his funny Instagram uh, uh, entries, you know, like uh, so camping solo in nature, you know, like so and uh, yeah, the, the marvelous yeah. Okay, I think I'm done. Uh, so uh, I think uh, yeah. Uh, so that's a, a social act in order to uh, facilitate the discussion. Uh, I hope you will walk one day together. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go back to Vida before I invite all three of you back on stage. Yes, uh, the, it was a platform of discussion, but first you have to get there. It's <laughs> pro problematic. Yeah, this is an idea, but I couldn't get it on paper. Uh, you put uh, the signs on stones. So here they're on trees or on poles. It's easier to move the poles, but the stones, then you have to be really strong. So people will believe it's truly the way. Uh, yeah, I, it's a crazy idea. Okay. Uh, but everybody's asking where we are going, uh, so the, the leader doesn't know. So there's got to be a leader who vandalizes the stones uh, it had, uh, with, with purpose. The man with the camera, who pictures the panoramic view. Uh, and I have one, but I think it's, it was not meant to be insulting, uh, but I, 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 this is it's you with the walking tongue. <laughs> But I, I didn't want to show it. But yeah. And what are you? What, are, what is what is Sankam doing there? Yeah, exactly. he's, he's walking his tongue. So, yes. but it, I think it's a bit insulting because it looks like a snake tongue. It's what was not the meaning. Yeah, it was not uh, the Am idea. I think someone. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah, it is you. But uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, that's everything I have. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Can I maybe invite you to the